And I wanted to show you what I learned from Bijan last week. And then uh, Dinah Chen had posted something on LinkedIn. So he posted this on LinkedIn. And uh, it looked kind of cool because this looked like Python over here. This is his uh, converter. But he's put the code into GitHub. If you go in GitHub and look at what he has, it's pretty cool. It's, it's nice and ha handy. He, his model is a tickle model, okay? And so he's given you all the information in that. And then, but he does the post-processing in Python. Remember that we talked about that, that you can separate the post-processing from it. So if you look at his Python code, he's got a lot of stuff in here, of course, but there's a couple of things that I grabbed that were interesting because I'm like, oh, look, there's so little code. I'm always happy when there's little code. Um, and so he's got this function that creates a GIF. First of all, what does he bring in? Typical, typical. And then there's this image IO, which I believe is what he uses. Yeah, yeah, that's what he uses here, okay? And so this create GIF, so it creates a GIF file, okay? And then I Googled it and there's other ways of creating also other movie types. The problem that I have with GIF files is that I can't upload them to YouTube. So what I actually do is I take this GIF file and put it into my Camtasia program and then produce it into something else. Um, I like doing this. And as I told you last time, what I'll do is I'll turn on the video recorder and let the analysis play. And that's one way of doing this. Um, but what I like about this, and this is kind of, I mean, this is what you were talking about the other day. Um, I can let this run in the background and I can keep working. And so as long as it can keep working, I, I don't care what the program is doing. So, um, so I thought this was kind of handy. Um, so just to follow up on, on what you were doing there. So all this create GIF does, you, you give a list of images which are actually, and I'll show you afterwards, they're just JPEGs, okay? So this is almost like a separate, if you have a bunch of JPEG files, uh, you can create, even that you've created some other way, some other means, even your photo album. This function here will just make a, a video out of it. So it's a great way of creating a slideshow too, if you want, okay? So this is the list of, PDF, of uh, JPEG files, and I'll show, show you afterwards how we create them. This is just the name of the output file. And then uh, this is the duration. And my understanding is this is a duration of how long each frame is on the screen. Okay. And so all it's doing is creating, adding each image to this frame. So it's gonna read that file and dump it into this frames array. And then it's gonna, turn that frames array into a GIF file through this command. So, and, and that's pretty much that I like processes that are this simple. And so then all you have to do is create this list of images. So the way you do that is if you look for image list, he does it. Uh, yeah, you see, he does it like in a, a strange way, but in, in the post-processing, I guess. But you see, here's the command really he's got for each step, right? So now he's doing his animation at each step. And at the end of each step, he saves that matplot figure into a JPEG and gives it a unique number. So you're always doing new ones, right? And uh, what I do, and I'll show you how I implemented this. He then recreates this list, but you can almost just, I just dump this into a, a list. I take this file name and I put it into a list of file names. But he then kind of does it as a second step. I don't really know why he does it this way. And then at the end, so once you've created this list, you've created the images, you have a list of all these file names and the order. Yeah, so, and it's weird that he does this afterwards uh, because you could have just done this case string append and then case string is equal to, you could have just appended this name into this image list. And that's what I do. I'll show you how I did it on mine. So once you've got this list, uh, you set a duration and the way, with the value he used 
is uh, 0.02. I use 0.05, but I mean, so that's a way of determining how fast it's going to go from, you know, how much, how long the frames last on your screen. So, but so it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is for each step, you create a JPEG. So you better have the room for it. And then, and save the name, and then you just string them into a uh, GIF in, with this create GIF file. So this is the script that in from Easy's that creates, you know, this whole big screen here, right? This whole thing here. All I've done is I've added, and I've kind of separated it so you could do both things. What did you got? Okay. I've, I've put in a button. Do you remember how I have a button to animate? Um, well, now I, I keep that button, but I'm also saying, you know, animate and create a, a GIF file. Okay. Now, as um, Bijan was pointing out, this is slow. Okay. Because you're, you're creating and what's slow is creating those JPEGs, but it's no big deal. So that's why it's good to just do it in the post-processing. Because, I mean, you've got the time afterwards anyways. And I just set it to run. And then I do other stuff. So, and if I want to keep working with Python, I just open up another instance of Python and, and work with that. Um, so, but it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of nice to do it. As I said, this just takes time and patience. Um, so let me show you how I modified my code um, to do that. So, so this was the previous command. This is just animate, okay? And so what it's doing is at each step, while this current step is less than number of steps, it checks it by asked it to stop so you can stop in the middle of it, but it's pretty much, where is it? At each step, it just calls the command update the model view at this step, okay? So it's just gonna plot the new deformation, whatever I want in my overall graph. Um, and so what I've added to this is a couple of things. One is image list, I define it outside of my, I initialize it outside of the function so that it becomes a global variable. Um, and, then, and then I call it as global, even though you don't have to because it's defined here. So if you don't define it here, then it becomes a global variable this way. Uh, but I just like to do it this way because then I forget. Um, so I initialize my image list. And then once I've done my visualization, you know, this is, if I'm at the very last step, it goes to the last step. Oh, I should put, I re, excuse me, I realize I have a break here. So this should actually be before this break as well. Um, but I defined the, fake, the, the file name and I put it into, uh, ha, ha, so I don't need this F, huh, Mike? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Or you can just oh. f, f the whole thing and then not right. have all these and plus, plus, plus. I like string. that. So what you're saying yeah. is this. Bracket. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is automatically convert this into a string. Right. Oh, I like this. Thank you. But yeah, you're right. It's... Just bracket. But yeah. Ta-da. Oh, so much cleaner. Thank you. Okay, so that's the figure name. I save it to a JPEG. It goes into my temp directory. And this is a temp directory of what your current directory is, okay? So this is in yeah. my Python working, you know, it's just in my working directory. Uh, but I do have a temp directory there. And whenever I put a TT in front of a variable of something, it just means it's junk. Okay, so that's why I just put it at the yeah. very beginning so that okay. I know it's junk. Now, the key thing is that he doesn't do in his is you want to remove this file. Okay, so I've added, this is the file name. I save it and I dump it into this array. And then I say draw and I move on with my life. Okay, <laughs> when I'm done, when the looping is done, all right, because that while loop is done. So when it's done with everything, now I'm going to dump those into this GIF file. I put in the step duration of 0.05. If you wanted to go faster, you could put 0.02. Um, I wanted to be able to watch the details. 
so I've got this list. This is the file name that's going to go into. So this file I was putting in into a temp temporary directory, but the GIF file I'm actually putting it into my model. You know where all these files are. Okay, and then I save it. So I create the GIF file, but then I go in and I go for every one of those JPEG files, remove it because you don't want to have a thousand JPEG files on your computer. That's kind of cool. And it's a little slow. It was kind of neat. I was doing this to kind of show the waves. So this is fully elastic, but it's kind of fun to watch the wave propagating up and down. And because there are different stiffnesses in the two directions, you could see the, you see how you can actually watch the wave go up and they're almost like different frequencies, especially when you get down after 40, which is the free vibration response. Um, then you just see the free vibration. But I thought this was just so kind of cool to watch the energy move up and down. You can watch these waves go up and I don't know if they come down again or not because it's a free boundary. But yeah, you can see them moving up and down. So I thought this was kind of a neat way of showing energy transfer. But mainly it's to make this look cool. And if you look at the GIF image, it shows you I was only recording or even just visualizing every 10 steps. Just like what you're saying, because we have so many analyses. And so I'm putting that at the control of you as you're doing this. I'm not visualizing every time step. I'm just going to do because I do this often and it's kind of handy even in so I put in this option of the increment that you can control it, you know, how, uh, you know, how interested am I in every step and you can visualize it and see, and then kind of finalize to what you want. Um, and so I was doing it manually versus kind of automatically. So that's what I do. So first I set everything up to look at how I want it to look. Oh, and then, it's great. It's you know, and so what I do is, and I'll show you, and it's almost done. I think if I just increase, let's just let it finish off. So what I do is not only do I set this up, but I will, by having this control, I'm going to go, I want to find out, oh, where is this displacement? You see, oh, look at that. <laughs> that was pretty lucky. So I will scroll until I'm at the maximum displacement point adjust things and also adjust the deformation scale factor. And with a large mod, it's a little slow, but then I'm like, you know, then I check, okay, make sure that my maximum deformation, okay, doesn't look like this, right? So I will take my time in setting things up, you know, set up the right view because it's so dependent on your structure. And, you know, is this one deloading versus two deloading? is gonna look different. And what's nice is that you everything gets recorded. And so, yeah, that's what I've done is, and I feel like with these controls, I was gonna add the control of the duration for the image, because that also controls, right now I have that increment at five seconds, but, or 0, 0.0, whatever it is. Um, but you know, you've got this here, so you can even go and control it here if you want to in, in running it. So I'll play with that. I'm thinking of putting this into a, a variable on the screen. But, you know, I'm just trying to do this for my own, optimizing my own time and, and things. But so what I'll do is I'll play around with it, set this up the way I want it, the scale factors and this and that, and then you animate and record. And something like this could take a few hours to generate, but that's fine. I mean, this is a, a final product. You're not trying to, you know, if you're trying to visualize, then you don't need to make a video out of it. Thank you, Bijan, for you made me curious about it. <laughs>